I found something pretty mind-blowing, my friends. This is Tony. Hope you're all doing well. I'm going to get into something I discovered. Actually, it was about a month ago, but this is pretty amazing. So we had multiple occurrences of two different anomalies happening near or around eclipses, solar and lunar eclipses. Now, I noticed this pattern when I was just investigating something that was sent to me by a subscriber. We were talking, and this is actually from Newsweek magazine here. And this might look familiar because I talked about this about a month ago, but I'm going to get into more detail now and talk about how this actually relates to these eclipses and get into more detail and show you more, more, uh, more footage and more evidence, all that kind of stuff. At any rate, so you had this thing happen back on April 10th. This is from Newsweek. Mystery as underwater anomaly larger than Texas spotted off African coast. Believe it or not, this happened more than once. No one seems to know about this, though. All right? I mean, people know about this specific instance, but they don't know about the other previous ones. So what's curious is this happened on 410. That was about two days after the eclipse. And I actually have seen now a theory as to what caused it. Now, what this app is saying, this is a an app that basically tells you, let's just read a little bit. It, it tells you about waves and things like that. A giant cluster of waves over 80 foot high spanning 2,000 miles, an area larger than Texas, appeared to move through the ocean off the coast of Africa on April 10th in a journey that lasted about 24 hours. It's about 36 hours, actually. Some online commentators say the formation could only have been created by something moving under the surface of the sea, making it an unidentified, you know, submersible <laughs> object. Uh, yeah, the size of Texas. Well, actually, there is another way this could have happened. And I'm going to get into that in this video. A graphic of the uh, anomaly has been shared widely online, sparked by numerous jokes and theories. Some suggest the anom anomaly shows the path of a giant underwater sea creature. <laughs> 2,000 miles across. Okay, that's pretty big. Um, yeah, I don't think so. The wave anomaly was picked up by Ventuski, a meteorological, meteorological app run by a Czech company in Meteo, which allows users to observe weather patterns, winds, and waves using real-time data collated from respected international sources, including the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, a U.S. GOV agency. On its website, the company wrote, we have created an entirely new system of displaying waves through the use of animated arcs or visualization near, clearly differentiates the direction of movement and the height of both winds, waves, and swells. So as you can see, it's very large, whatever it was. Now, what's curious is I found another instance of this that happened two years ago. And they show actually a picture of what it looked like from a satellite. And it shows this weird swirl look. And it's in this area. Now, this area is known for having sort of like micro swells and things like this. But what this, this channel is actually claiming is happening scientifically is they're saying that this specific area of the Atlantic is nearest to an internal Van Allen radiation belt comes closest to the Earth's surface. So they're saying that the Van Allen radiation belt comes closest to the Earth at this point near South Africa. Now, I don't know how that would tie into this or if that is even the case, but I mean, theoretically, that can that could make some sense of this because, of course, this happened during solar eclipses or around the time of solar eclipses. Perhaps the electromagnetic interference by the solar eclipse somehow affects the Van Allen belt or something. I don't know. It could cause this. That's one theoretical way you could look at it. Of course, others are saying just kind of silly stuff like it was an unidentified, you know, object or <laughs> uh, some massive mythological sea creature. <laughs> 2,000 miles across. I don't think so. It's kind of big. You know, that's a little bit too big. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, you know, some massive ship underwater or something like that. But it is interesting trying to figure out what it is. 
But what's really interesting though also, again, it was 36 hours long. And again, it was near the time of a solar eclipse. And when you look back, two years back, they had a eclipse shadow path that went this way. And that swell, or whatever it was, was right here during that time two years ago. Could it be related to this eclipse? Of course, the eclipse recently was this way, and it was there again. Does this affect the Van Allen belt? Could it be something else? I don't know what it is, but it is interesting how it's related to the solar eclipse, and that was not the only thing that happened. And actually, there was something that happened on the solar eclipse near the sun. This might look familiar. Remember seeing this before? This is back in 2012. It also happened in 2022. Some mysterious object, very giant. So for some reason connected, a spherical object connected to the sun. Looks like it's sucking energy off of it. We don't know what's going on actually. But this has actually been seen many times. 10 years apart to within almost a month. About 10 years and a month apart. I think, is it 10 years and a month? I think it's 10 years and a month apart. Uh, you had the exact same thing happen twice in the same place. But we just had it also happen again on the other side of the sun during the day of the solar eclipse. All right, so you saw how big that spherical object is that, of course, is near, you know, the sun. The question is, how big is that? And to get an idea, let me play a little bit of a clip from Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about the size of the sun here. Let's play this really quick. If you hollowed out the sun, of the sun, and then I sort of played a little basketball and started tossing earths into the sun. Do you know how many earths would fit in the sun? Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically what he guesses, this guy here guesses that it's 100,000 earths can fit in the volume of the sun. Now, I thought that actually sounded high. I was like, no way, it's not that high, is it? Apparently, that's low. It's actually way more. Uh, let's see if I can find the, the section to where how many Earths actually fit inside the sun itself. Let me play this just so you can hear it for yourself. Let's see here, where is it at? Here it is. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to play. All right, here we go. Let me play this. Number, the actual number is about a million. What? <laughs> a million. So a million Earths can fit inside the sun, according to scientists, right? Now, again, assuming this is all the case, you saw how big that object is near the sun. It's clearly... Probably bigger than Earth, obviously, based on that, just knowing that a million Earths will fit in the sun. I'm thinking it's probably even bigger than Jupiter, even. Whatever it is, it's extremely large. So I just wanted to put that out there so you can get a perspective. If this thing is what it seems to be, it's very, very large. As you can see right here, it's something tethered to the sun. So this is... I mean, actually, this has been seen many, many times. And it, and it is curious. They do seem to happen around the time of solar and lunar eclipses. I'm not saying that's always the case because it isn't. But they seem to be sort of in that range. So it, is, it seems a little strange to me. I just showed you one. Uh, let's see here. I just showed you this one, which is literally on April 8th. This is on April 8th this year. Now, the other ones were on the dates of, of eclipses, I don't think, but they were close. Let's see. The other one was on, one was in March 2012, and one was in April 2022. Let's see here. Um, yeah, April 2022. As you can see here, there was a partial one. And it was actually in that region again. No, no, it's not the same region. That region is over here. It's a different region, actually. April 30th. So that's similar time frame. It's not exact, though, because it, I don't think it was April 30th. I think it was like April 20th or something like that, that, it, that, that they saw it. So it's in the range, but not quite. Pretty close. 
So you get kind of the idea. Is It's so strange how they seem to be in the same ballpark. Both anomalies seem to be around the time of lunar and solar eclipses. It's a little strange. You know, it's a little strange. So, at any rate, so you got that. You have actually a lot more of these, believe it or not. This one is from 2020, August 2020. You can see something near the sun. What is it? Now, let me look at August. No, I don't see any in August. There's not there's not there's only a, there's one in July, but there's none in August. So that's kind of weird. So you got that one in August of 2020, but there is no solar or lunar eclipse during that time. That's when the picture was taken, allegedly. That's what they said. And actually, we're going to get into much more as we get into this video. First, I got to mention food supply. 25 year shelf life. Link is in the description. Three months worth for $5.97. They also got a one week deal for $49. They also have a number of other things available. Go check the link in the description, folks. Also, this book here, The Lost Ways How Your Great Great Grandfather Lived Without Electricity, had a bit of seller. Do things around the house like they did in the old, good old days. Hundreds of pages illustrated. You, you definitely want to get that before something happens, folks. You don't want you can't get it after the fact. It's gonna be something you gotta buy beforehand. Get the printed version. It's like thirty-seven dollars plus shipping. How to make a, a can stacker? How, how to build a fire? How to? Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff. How to make pinbacan? Lots of things illustrated, and lots of great comments about it. Check the link in the description, folks. And of course, my website, GR Videos. Go check that out as well. Four ninety-five a month. First month is free. Over a thousand of my videos over there, folks. All those videos I spent many, actually I have videos where I put a lot of music and the time and effort into them, even spent a week on some of them to build them. Link is in the description for that as well. So I think we're in a time frame, folks, where clearly something's being said to us. I think God is trying to tell us something, folks. That's what I think, honestly. So definitely we're seeing things happen around us that are sort of unprecedented, folks. Things in the stars, in the sky, and also on Earth, in the oceans. Things that are unexplained. And people, are, of course, are coming up with funny theories and such. But I was trying to be a little bit more serious about it. It could have something to do with the Van Allen Belt. I don't know. That was what this one guy was proposing here. Because it's happened numerous times in that area. That area apparently is the closest where the Van Allen Belt gets to the Earth. So perhaps there is something to be said about that. I don't know. But this thing, what is this? That is what we need to know. Of course, a lot of people have speculated about this over the years. And we're seeing, actually, let me show you a number of things in this realm. There's a lot. So we have, of course, this one here. I just showed you this one a minute ago. Some are saying it's a planet behind the sun, right? What is that, you know? Could it be that? We have here a better, more detailed picture where they heightened it. This, that, this one is actually 2012. I think this one's the 2022. Here's another one. I believe this is from a different time frame than either of those two. And then you got this one here. What is that? Right? I mean, this is May 11th, 2021. What happened on May 11th, 2021? Let's go look at that. Oh my goodness. Here we go again. Time of a lunar eclipse is very close to it. May 25th, again, this one was before the lunar eclipse. And actually, the one that just happened on April 8th was actually, it started before the eclipse. So it seems like every time right before an eclipse, whether it's a few days or 15 days, we see one of these objects show up. Often. Very, very strange. Why does it show up 
anywhere from 5 to 15 days before an eclipse. Is there something that we're missing here, folks? What could this be? Clearly, it's something. It's not nothing. You, you can't just ignore it. Just like, oh, just blinders. Just ignore it. Ignore the thing, huge, huge thing near the sun. I mean, this is what they do. If they don't have an explanation for it, it doesn't it doesn't meet uh, scientific rationale. Really, what would you call that? It clearly is there. <laughs> it's there. You can't deny its existence. It's there, right? So what is it? That's the question. And so there's actually about five or six of these I just showed you. This one's actually much larger. This one's actually much larger. Look how big that one is. So some of these look larger than others as well. Are there planetary bodies that can move? There was a movie I watched. What was that movie called? Ah, it was about the moon being uh, an artificial object. Is that moon, moon movie? I'm trying to remember what it was called. No. Movie about moon. Okay, there we go. No, 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 no. Moonfall. Was it Moonfall? I think it might have been Moonfall. Was it this movie? Yeah. So they go to the moon and they find out it's an actual artificial object. They get inside it and it's actually a colossal. It's like the Death Star. It's a colossal artificial object that can, that can move on its own. Right? That's what the movie was about. I'm not postulating this. This is a movie. Moonfall. We even had Star Wars with the Death Star, right? Why is it we see something getting close to the sun like this? Could it be siphoning energy off the sun? <laughs> what is going on here, man? Right? Could this be like the movie Moonfall where you have literal planets that can move on their own? So... I don't know. That's just sort of a weird thought. I'm not saying that's what it is. Who knows? I don't know what it is. But it is strange how you have something that appears to be siphoning energy off the sun that continually, during around the time, just before a solar eclipse seems to show up. I don't know what to say. Last time I did this video, it was like the same thing. I'm like, what is this thing? And of course, there's lots of different theories. Clearly, it seems to be something that moves on its own. Uh, you know, an organism? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it'll be getting that close to the sun either. That's very close. It's pretty hot. Uh, and then, of course, what is this anomaly? What's going on in off the coast of South Africa where they have 80-foot waves? <sighs> this stuff fascinates me because it seems like there's more and more of it every time I look. It's not like it it just explains itself either. It just seems like it, the more you dig into it, the more the more down deep down you get into something you're like, well, you got more questions. 80 foot high, 10 on April 10th, right? 2000 miles across. Anyway, I'm kind of wondering what some of you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.